You may be seated. It is an absolute honor to be back in the Canadian district. I cannot tell you enough how much of a joy it is for me and Bethany to be back. Last year, God did incredible things, and we were as blessed or more than anything that took place in this last conference. So we're anticipating an incredible incredible move of God. God's going to do something amazing. I feel a spirit of diplomacy in the Canadian district. Every time we come into the Canadian district, I feel like God can use this district to represent the world on a level of unity and true multicultural revival. I feel that without a shadow of a doubt. It is an honor Brother McLaughlin, to be with you, Bishop, Brother McCarty, and to be with Brother, Brother Sean. It has been an honor to hear you, and I have been looking forward to meeting you in person. And my Lord, what a, what a session, what a session. And Brother Howe, and of course, Brother Hanscom, my boss, amen. It's good to be with him. I just want us to get an atmosphere where we can pray and get a revelation for what God is going to do in our ministries. The canvas of the church, the canvas of what we call church, what we've always understood, what we've always anticipated is shifting. It's becoming clear that God has something in mind that we have not anticipated. That God has something planned that is gonna be bigger than any one person and that God actually is going to do what he said in his word that the entire world will be reached we're at the beginning of that we're about to see that and instead of trying to anticipate it we have to just be ready because God's plans are going to be big in order for Matthew 24 19 to come to pass and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all the nations and then shall the end come in order for that prophecy which is a sure prophecy and this gospel of the kingdom shall it will be preached in all the world God is telling us it is going to happen now that means he's not leaving this up to us. It's going to happen. Now, that's, that's a lofty promise. The whole world is going to hear the gospel. The whole world is going to hear the gospel. And it's going to spread. All nations is going to hear the sermon, the witness, the message. And then shall the end come. Now, I don't know if you're pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I'm ready trib. I just, listen, I just want to be on the first boat out doesn't matter to me we just got to be ready for anything but there is one sure prophecy that requires no interpretation when you see this gospel cover the earth the end will come we are about to see something and from where I sit and where me and Bethany minister at the United Nations and just we've been there for a month because we've been fighting against global powers and, and demonic authorities. And I even thought Satan himself entered into the UN this month. We were under so much attack. And, and, but while we were in the midst of all this darkness and all of this chaos and, and what the one world system is shaping out to be, the Lord mentioned something to me. He said, you know, this darkness that you are seeing on the horizon is darker than it has ever been. But be encouraged, I said, that when where sin doth abound, grace does that much more abound. I will give my church greater anointing. 
anointing and power because the darkness is becoming greater. So everything we see around us should let us know that there's something bigger coming to me. It's going to become a reality to us that God is getting ready to shift things and move things into uncharted waters. Matter of fact, this last revival is going to be greater than any other recorded revival. Uncharted waters. But there will be chaos. Holy chaos. Well, what's holy chaos? Brother Howe and Brother Sean, when they were talking, I couldn't, I could not believe how in my notes they were. I, what Brother Sean just said, I thought nobody else would, would say, especially in the same meeting, I brought the same. But what they were telling us is absolutely true. When this thing begins to explode, it's going to be holy chaos. In other words, we're not going to know who is going to be used where or for what. That is apostolic. Who knew what Philip would have done when he went to Samaria? Who knew the Holy Ghost was going to move him over and send him down the road to reach an Ethiopian unit? Who knew he was going to be translated out of that place and to another place? He's just an assistant. Is that apostolic? Who knows what God is going to do next and with who? For that reason, I present myself. I am about as unlikely as they come to being in the places I have been. I would be the last person I would have selected. I wouldn't have selected me. And yet God tapped me on the shoulder and thrusted me into an area and the only reason I was there was because of an accepted step of faith. There is no telling where faith is going to take us. There is no telling what God has on his mind. One person cannot accomplish what's getting ready to happen. A council of people is not enough. There are more people in the earth than what is recorded. Do not believe that there's 7.8 or just under 8 billion people in this earth. That's the folks they've estimated, guesstimated, and could count. Do you know most countries have quit counting all that stuff a long time ago? These are the things they know that they don't give information on, but I want you to understand, there are so many people on this earth, only God could find them all. So there will be unpredictable fires. Yes. In the book of Acts, there were unpredictable fires. They didn't know where the next fire was going to explode. Matter of fact, when they, when they attacked the church and scattered the people, fires went everywhere. Chaos. Unpredictable. Who knows who God is going to use next? And for what? Are we ready for that? Is this district ready for that? Is this district ready for some young person to walk in and fall at these altars and in a few years you're going to be hearing reports of them doing things we never thought we'd ever heard of before. But if, if we don't loose them and let them go, if, if we don't encourage people to step out on them, the only thing I know that is absolutely essential is somebody's got to be ready to step out on faith. Every step of the way at the United Nations Revival, I would call Brother Hanscom. I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. Brother Hanscom would tell me, well, nobody knows really what's going on with this whole thing. We were trailing and trailblazing and walking through uncharted waters, but that's faith. Faith is not walking through roads we've already trailed. 
revival. So we have to be ready to see bushes and trail a new blaze with the Holy Ghost and see what God will do. The Holy Ghost mentioned to me, Brother Sean, that there is a process of combustion that is getting ready to take place in the church. And I said, combustion? What is combustion? Ignitable materials, when they reach an active level, they are unstable. They can explode at any time. So you tiptoe around active materials. Because one explosion can start a chain reaction. That is getting ready to happen to the church. There is getting ready to be chain reactions and this thing is going to get out of control. It got out of control in the book of Acts. Matter of fact, they were saying, what do we do with this? I don't know what we do with this. Peter, what happened? Well, I was there and, and, and I was preaching. I was preaching. All I did was preach. I didn't tell you. The Holy Ghost fell on its own. It just fell on it. They said, well, what do we do about this? I don't know what to do about this. How do we teach him? I don't know. Let's do something. Let's write up on the, let's write up a position paper and give it to him. What was going on? It had lost control. And this last revival is going to be greater than that one. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for God to do something? And you on the shoulder in the middle of the night. It's going to be great. You are the one I have selected to make I, an impact in this area. Something. Now, we have been ministering at the United Nations. We're coming on four years. And we are amazed at what we have seen. We've now baptized 34 global leaders. We've now equipped these leaders so that in secret, some of them have to do it in secret. Some of them, I am amazed at the faith. I, this is a level God is stirring things up and there are peoples coming among us who are not afraid of anything. They are ready to die for this and I'm looking at them going, you are? They've got something and, and we've, we're empowering them and we're giving them materials and global tracks is everywhere, Bishop. We're sending that to every leader and to every country. It's one of the greatest things we've ever come up with, global tracks. And they're taking this and they're taking these apostolic materials and they're sending them and, and we created this United Nations application, this app on, where they're sharing it in secret and it's, it's spanning the, the world and, 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 and they're, they're telling their countries, Islamic countries, and they're talking to other leaders and Hindu leaders. And, 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 and all these different leaders, they're talking to them about this message and it's spreading and we're baptizing and we're teaching. It's gotten out of control. There was a temptation to say, wait a minute, I got to know what's going on here so we don't get out of sorts. No, 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 don't call him. Don't, 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 no, 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 don't sin. No, 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 no. God said, you, you, you think you can control what has happened? This thing is spreading? And I asked one of them, I said, well, you, you, you could face death. He said, this is the truth. It's worth dying for. I closed my mouth and let God be God. This thing is it's starting to spread. Because of one message, one step of faith, one walk in faith, now we are seeing this thing explode. Explode. Do you have your, you have your, anybody, anybody have their cell phones on? Anybody got a, let me see if I've got, anybody have a calculator? I'm going to get my, let me get my cell phone. If you have your cell phone, hold it up in the air. If you have the calculator app, let's do something neat before we pray. I was getting my statistics from the United Nations General Assembly statistical website. They, they, have, they keep track of what's going on on the General Assembly, the United Nations television website, which is audited by all leaders and kings 
and, and ambassadors and delegates and all of the staff and all of the students, all of the college interns, political affairs, all audit, global affairs, and it is and it is used as a beacon of teaching in classes and they televise it everywhere. Well, when we brought in Brother Stone King two and a half years ago to address the General Assembly and he told them Jesus is the answer. And the answer is Acts 2.38. That's still posted. And I got the statistics and it's still consistent that every five minutes they're estimating about 250 views on this website, which is expected. But, but here's the thing, when they view it, they're listening to our preacher, our ambassador, Give them the Acts 238 message that that is the answer to all of the troubles today. And we've got, we're getting messages everywhere going, I need more information. What we're finding out is this. Now, five minutes. Now, you've got to help me because I'm not a genius. Five minutes every 250, there's 250 views every five minutes. So, um, how many minutes are in an hour? 70, did you already do <laughs> 72,000 views a day? So if we were to mark, if we were to multiply, now we got two years, that's two, 365 times two, right? What is our number of viewership globally? Stand on your feet. 52 million views. Now, and that's very conservative because that was in the spring of 2015. We're already past that. That was one, 52 million plus views. Because of one step of faith, four years ago, the world 52 million times have heard the Acts 238 message. And I'm going to tell you a lot of things that's going on this weekend. We're going to have church this weekend. But it's all designed for us to start believing God for things we have never seen before in order for Matthew 24 14 to come to pass it's going to get chaotic it's going to lose control it's going to spread like wildfire but God told me very clearly two years into the United Nations ministry when we were keeping it all secret he said it's time for my people to know what I am doing well, why it would put people in danger and then if we, I'll take care of that. It's time for my people to know that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Ever since then, we've been hearing about mayors. We've been hearing about, we've been hearing about police officers. We've been hearing about sheriffs. We've been hearing about government leaders and political leaders in Congress and the Senate. We're starting to hear about more and more people having faith and reaching those leaders. And it is happening. And they're getting the Holy Ghost. And oh, I've got some things to tell you about that. But what we're seeing is that because that door has been opened, there's no limit to who we can reach. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. He's going to use us. There's no telling what is in your future. There's, but you just be ready for it. You just be on the cutting. Some God, God's getting ready to do something in my life. Something is getting. It doesn't matter my age. It doesn't matter my income. It doesn't matter my IQ. Something is getting ready to happen in my life. And I have to be ready for anything. The only thing I need is faith. Would you come to the front? Hallelujah. 
I want you to clear the slate on what you expect God to do and start saying there's no telling what God is going to do. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Eye hath not seen. Ear hath not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the thing that God has prepared for them that love. We don't know. We can't fathom. It's going to blow our minds. We just have to get in position. We just have to get in position. We've got to be in position. We just have to keep ready. I'm told, and I'm a former athlete back in my many, many years of life. I'm told that the most valuable person in crucial times on a basketball team is the sixth man. Why? Because everybody's exhausted. Everybody's been playing hard. And if you got a good six man, that's why they have six man of the year. If you got a good six man, you can insert him into the program, into the system. And he brings new energy and new faith and a spark. And every time they interview a six man, they say, how did you step in and do that? They said, you got to stay ready. I'm the six man. I got to stay ready. There's no telling when the coach is going to call me. There's no telling when they're going to insert me or where he's going to insert me. Especially if it's the playoffs. If it's the playoffs, they might have you playing, being a guard, play center because they're mixing it up to try and offset the enemy. This last hour, there's going to be people inserted. It's going to be us. Some of us are going to be inserted into some things. You just have to stay ready. I want you to lift your hands with me. I feel the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This leadership, this ministry team, these leaders of God in this Canadian district. Oh Lord, I pray an anointing of faith. I pray an anointing of faith and expectation for what you're doing limits God to what you want to do in our churches, in our cities, in our district, in our communities, in our country, in our world. There's no telling. We just got to stay ready. Oh, you got to lift your voice and say,